Well, good evening. It's Aaron with Bowtie Treasures here in the Bowtie Treasures studio. It's Friday night. And as always, we are here to do some amazing, creative, fantastic fun on some kind of project. And tonight is no different. We have a continuation project. We started this, uh, I, I started this on Dixie Bell's Facebook page last Saturday night. And we're getting down to the last turn homeward bound with this project. And I'm ready to stain the top. Uh, whenever you're staining a project, it can go pretty quick. The bigger the project, of course, slower. In fact, just the other night, uh, and I'll be posting it probably here tomorrow, two end tables that I did. And I stained the top of those somewhat the same way. But those I have said in many of my lives that I really like using Voodoo Gel Stain. Here's an example of what that, that bottle looks like. This is <clears throat> Tobacco Road. And one of the reasons I like that is because it's kind of transparent. The wood grain can show. It's easy to work with. It's water-based. But uh, I've got a few areas on this piece that I kind of need to hide the blemishes on. So I'm going to go a little darker. Dixie Bill has, I'm going to say six no-paint gel stains. Probably one of the more popular ones is going to be the Espresso. But if you compare... And I'll show you here in just a second. If you compare the colors, let's let this pick up here. The top one is the Colonial Black. It has a little bit more, there you can see in the light, has a little bit more black slash gray. And I like that tone. I don't want the, I don't want too much of the reddish tone. So the Espresso is the bottom one. If you like to whitewash or pickle something, you can do a white gel stain. The gray's really nice. This is the weathered gray. The other one that's kind of cool is walnut, but to me, I don't know that I would prefer walnut per se. And I don't know if I would ever use, not that it's bad, but Georgian, Georgian cherry. So this is, a, um, this is the container of no paint gel stain that I'll be using of Colonial Black. You can already see I've used it. What I recommend is one of Dixie Bell's applicator pads. There's two that come in this container. And if you'll notice here, it says one-time use with oil-based products. If you're doing water-based, you can clean it up. But basically, once you use one of these pads um, for oil-based, pretty much consider it done. But they're not super expensive. So if you really want a nice lint-free applicator pad this is a great great option not the only option you can use a regular rag but you're going to get a really superior finish with something like this so that's what i'll be using tonight is one of the finishing pads so those are the two things that i'm going to be using tonight well, first all we need to do is we need to get this opened up i have a fan running off in the distance i don't know if it's picking up on my mic but i have it on high it's not a bad it's not a problematic smell but it does have a smell to it it is oil based um, so if smell bothers you then I would recommend one be in a well ventilated area and um, but I also have I even turned on my air con I'm inside my studio which is inside the house but I didn't want to lug this piece all the way out there I'm just giving this a quick stir to make sure that everything is nice and any of the li moving liquid is kind of put back into the stain itself. So that's what I'm doing there. Again, I just used this maybe three or four nights ago. Okay, so there it is. That's the recent project I just did using the Colonial Black. Just a simple, I basically sanded the old stain off. I actually removed the tops of this night's end tables because it was easier to separate the project into two pro pieces. I stained and worked on it outside, painted everything inside. Today I put them together. But such a lovely stain. It already I've already top coated here, so it's all set to go. But that's kind of where we're headed with this project. Now that you've seen where we're headed, hopefully that gives you some insight of where we're gonna go. Now I will tell you, I'm gonna I'm gonna say right off the bat that it was a lot easier to stain that project because the tops are so small. 
The disadvantage of how this is going to go is I've got to work across this piece really fast. And um, the, the instructions even talk about a clean, lint-free cloth, wipe off excess stain. I won't be wiping off excess stain because my goal is not to have any excess stain. It's because I'm going to rub it into it and I'm going to keep moving down. So if you're going to do generous, meaning like you have globs and stuff, then yeah, you need to wipe it off. But I won't be doing that. Um, so you'll kind of get the idea. I'm not breaking the rules. I'm just kind of different preference. Do you see how much I put on the rag just to dab a bit? And uh, again, once I get going, uh, I'm going to keep moving. And I probably will just have to go over and move the camera around. But hopefully you have a good view. So first thing I'm going to do, I have top coated my buffet. And the reason I do that is because if I get any of this gel stain on my buffet, I can, I can go ahead and wipe that off. Okay, then here's the other thing that you might want to do is um, once you if, you, if you do what I'm doing right now, just come back and keep it going in the, in the right direction, okay? All right, just keep going back in there, rub it in there. You see how I'm going back over it because I don't want any extra areas. Feel for, oh, and notice I'm wearing gloves. This is oil-based. There's no reason for you to have oil-based stain on your hands. Do you see, I don't know if you can see, but right here and here, I've had to fill two dowel, two holes, and I have no idea why. I don't know what was there, what the previous people did to it that needed holes, but I did, I did fill in um, a couple areas. And that's one reason I'm going with the darker stain. This to me is just as dark as the espresso. It's just a different feel. You see, I'm kind of going back over and blending that in. Get the first application on there. I mentioned it has a little bit of a smell. It's not horrible. It's not like, um, a it's not like a toxic. It's just a, it's a different smell. And like I said, I've got, I've got a fan going. I've got my air conditioner going. You may not appreciate the beauty sometimes of the stain until you get it top coated. I mean, top coated. Yeah, top coated. That's what I want to say. Let me come back and do the front. I don't want to get so far. If you watched my live Saturday, you know I had the tops uh, taped off. You don't want to go back. You don't. It's going to start drying on you. Basically, the the stain will start start evaporating. So you don't want to go back over your work too much. So be careful about that. I probably you should not have even done that. Again, this is a simple live tonight. Once this is dry, I'll probably give it a, a day or two. I'll top coat it once I know it's nice and dry. And then this piece will be pretty much done. See, it's just nice and easy. Just get it on there, rub it in. You might have to feather out areas as you go over previous worked area. Well, keep gonna... working so you don't have excess, excess buildup. You can apply more than one coat, but I don't want to be so dark in this situation that I can't see the wood grain. But remember, we are, in this case, I, you can go back and wipe some of this off, but I am trying to hide blemishes and patches and stuff like that. Plus, people really like these dark tops anyway, right? If, you've, if you refinish furniture, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Notice how I'm going with the grain. Although when I put it down, I'm going kind of in a circle. But as long as you finish it out in the grain, That'll give you a nice, it'll help if you have it. You don't want like um, white marks going in the wrong direction. Okay. Sorry, this part's not on camera, but I think you know what I'm doing over here. Just going down the edge. So this applicator pad's fantastic. Uh, I put in the comments, if you'd like to um, order Dixie Bell's supplies, 
Uh, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, just bookmark my website, bowtietreasure.com. And whenever you need to order, just jump on there, grab the Dixie Bell link, and you'll be set to go. So I'm looking right here. There's a little extra streak. Looking for anything else I may have missed. Boom. It probably will need just a light, a light sanding of one of the Dixie Bell. I like to use Dixie Bell's sanding sponges. They're really great light grit. And um, I may come over that before a top coat. But right now, looking for any excess, like I said, any excess that's not, that you don't want. And that looks like a million bucks. So the next, so here you can see my hands because I've been holding that pad. This is why I'm wearing gloves. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cap on there because I don't want to take my gloves off yet until that's done. And here's what I'd like to do next. You could probably get a, um, a Ziploc bag or something like that. But I usually, I learned, I think I learned this from Melissa and Top Drawer RVA is I just use my gloves. And now I'm not touching any of the junk and I could just throw that away. How easy was that? It took us just a couple minutes, right? So quick. You're right. Joy, good to see you coming in. So that's, that's a, uh, let's pull you in a, a top view. Just a uh, really lovely, I'm going to say fairly consistent job. You're going to start seeing inconsistencies in drying times. So it's really, not going to do justice to it. it looks like I might just have a couple areas of yeah it's looking really good so now I just have to be patient I'll put a fan on it just so that the it knocks a lot of the cure time down but like I said the only thing left is I'll use a satin top coat and then uh, to finish it off and that's going to look ready to go now as I mentioned before it will have this piece on the very top. So it's going to look fantastic. So far, I'm really loving the creativity aspect of this piece. It's nice to do something a little different uh, as opposed to, for example, the, uh, uh, as I just showed you, the, the nightstands or the end tables are beautiful, but it wasn't a creative outlet. It was more or less just a Get, get the job done, right? I hope that helps and gives you some tips. You can knock it out. Um, some disadvantage to the no pain, gel, no pain gel stain is, does take a little longer to dry. The Voodoo gel stain, you can be top coating a lot quicker. So if you're trying to turn a piece faster, but the gel stain, no pain, uh, the Voodoo gel stain, you can't quite get as dark quickly um, as you can. Uh, I do like to be able sometimes mix the voodoo gel stains, but uh, I guess you could probably mix the no pain gel stains, but just not as not as easily. So, anyways, it's just great. That Dixie Bell has so many great products, and again, I encourage you to go to bowtietreasures.com, click on the Dixie Bell link uh, when you go when you when you're ready to go order, and that would help me out a lot. Have a good weekend. Do something creative. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures, Dixie Bell content creator here in Pensacola, Florida. You guys take care. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.